In a beloved S-shaped strip of land, Vietnam is a multi-ethnic country with 54 distinct ethnic groups living and fighting together for national construction and defence for thousands of years. In this historical process, culture has generated an invisible power for the country. The combination of 54 ethnic groups has created Vietnamese culture as a colourful, bright, but simple and close picture. Each group represents a unique colour gamut, contributing to the flawless picture. When visiting Vietnam Museum of Ethnology and the windy capital of the ancient northernmost Vietnam base, people can feel great happiness as if they were going along the length of the country. The valley region is the cultural space which is transferred between mountainous areas and northern Midlands Delta. With the characteristics of the valley basin, which has the river system winding the mountain and creates small alluvial rivers, are favourable conditions for the development of agriculture. The valley region is also the oldest settlement location of Tay Thai ethnic groups. In this period, we focus on discussing about the culture of ethnic groups such as Tay, Nung, Zai, Lao, Lu, San Chai, Bo Yi, Sing Kong, who are living in the valley region. The valley region stretches from the provinces of Bac Gat, Thái Nguyen, Tion Quang, Quang Ning, Yen Bai, Lạng Sơn, Khao Bang, Hoa Bing, Sin La, to the west of Thanh Hoa, Nghệ An province. I am a Tay ethnic group member living in the border area, 4,000 kilometers away from Thai Win province. Now I feel privileged to see such rare reconstruction of a mountainous cultural space. Whenever I visit the contemporary house on stilt and the house of Num ethnic group, which are modeled on the prototype of hundreds of years ago, being reconstructed following the prototype is the most valuable thing. This is a unique display style of the museum. In the Museum of the Cultures of Vietnam's ethnic groups, the valley region's culture is indicated on the area of 4,400 meters squared. They had chosen tree works as highlights to introduce about the cultural life of ethnic groups in the valley region, including traditional house of the ethnic group Thai's language family, Baksan district, Langsan province. Traditional house of the ethnic group Nung's language family, Lok Bing district, Langsan province. The statues of Thai Mung girls who are taking water. Besides, there are many landscape systems surrounding the works such as palm forests, tea hills, streams, gyroscopes, rice mortars, which using the water power associated with the landscape in the valley residence. For a long time, residents of Taitai groups had chosen the fertile valley, which surrounded by the rivers and streams, to farm and create the material and spiritual values for adapting to the natural environment. There are many palm forests, untouched green tea hills, apricot and plum flowers blooming over the forests. Along to the river and stream banks, the spinning gyroscopes were used to bring in water to terrace the fields and the rice mortars diligently to create white rice. For many years, the gyroscopes has been become closer with the people. It expressed the creativity and conquering nature of the valley residents' irrigation techniques in pre-industrial era. Along with Mung Phai and Lei Hin, the gyroscopes had significantly contributed to the liberation of labour in the agricultural population for a long time. The gyroscopes and rice mortars 
that used water power exhibiting in the museum were outlined under the traditional prototype by artisans of Bokang Hamlet, Tuzien Commune, Van Quan District and Langson Province. Gyroscope and rice mortars were made of bamboo and wood, which applying the advantages of the flowing and the preventing of flowing, as well as creating the pressure and impacting to the treadmills. When the gyroscope is moved, the mounted bamboo tube will draw water of the streams in order to flow into the pipeline system, then moving into the higher fields. Rice mortars that using the water power is also associated with the agricultural life of people in the valley region. Due to living in area which having many rivers and streams, the local residents had known to utilize the rice mortars that realizing the human's working capacity. The rice mortar includes mortar's body and the mortar. The mortar's body is a long wood which is four meters in length. The head of mortar is mounted with a chump of wood which is perpendicular to the body of mortar using as a pestle. The end of mortar was hollowed cut for storage water using and mortar is a chump of carved wood that was fixed in the ground in order to store the rice. When the water was filled full in the troughs, the head of mortar will be lifted up. When the water poured out, the pestle was pressed down to the mortar following a continuous cycle. Besides, there was a cluster monument of groups of Tai Tai and Mung's girls who were taking water. These monuments were designed vividly by Hu Ming Huai, an old artisan and otter. Mainly living in valley regions, the groups of Tai, Tai and Mung's girls usually went to take water from the stream, supporting to daily activities. The traditional tools which are used to take water were large bong tree tubes with one a closed end and an opened end. It's used for ladling the water. When the tubes were full of water, the girls had put the tubes into baskets and then came back to their homes. In the Museum of the Cultures of Vietnam's ethnic groups, the traditional houses of Thai ethnic group were considered as an important highlight on the campus of the outdoor exhibition. Thai people often built their stilted houses at the foot of mountains and hillsides. They loomed behind the spreading palm trees. In the afternoon, the stilted houses were bloomed in the blue smoke that covered by the peaceful forests and streams. The traditional house of Thai people in Northeast mainly popular with type of stilted house that included three rooms and four roofs. This object in the museum is modeled on the architecture of the house of Zung Kong Kuat. Zung Kong Kuat is Thai people who, living in Tien Zhao Hamlet, Long Do Commune, Bak Sun District, and Lang Son Province. His house has been built one year ago. The faming systems and trusses made from the precious timbers such as lim, nian, etc. The farming systems and trusses made from the precious timbers such as lim, nian, etc. The floor was covered by laminated wood. The roofs were thatched with yin and yang tile. The floor was divided into many bedrooms and living rooms. Above the roof there is a crawl space which paved by the plank. Tay people used this place as food storage. Previously, the downstairs had been used as a barn to lock buffaloes, cows, horses, pigs, chickens, ducks and goats, etc. There was an empty wooden plank floor or pounded vow bamboos used as a drying yard in front or behind of the house. Tay people attach great importance for using feng shui in building their houses. The stair was located at the gable of the house. The upstairs of Tay people always had nine steps. They imagined that nine was a lucky number. The images of staircase appeared in the poem. Nine steps of staircase were referred as nine steps of mountains and nine cords of love. These things took us to the stilted house which contains its significant humanistic values. 
There always had water floor putting in front of the house, that using for washing their hand before entering the house. Water storage floor was also the place for men and women to meet and sing together in the moonlight nights. Tay people decorated their houses neatly. Ancestral altar was placed in the middle of the house to express the worship of descendants to the merits of ancestors. The altar was decorated with several characteristic motifs. The two sides were the bedrooms of family members. Tay people's chambers gate were decorated with distinctive brocade in shape of rhombic and flower. The draw shades room is used for making the privacy for each member. The two left sides of the house were the son's bedrooms. The windows were used to put the weaving looms. By using the looms, the compatriots had created the products for serving humans self-sufficient lives for centuries. Furthermore, the sustainability of the looms and the textile craftsmanship in each family considered as the continuation of a beautiful and humanistic customs in Tay people's wedding ceremony. This ritual was called offering wet and dry towel. Old people say that a mother gave birth but the diapers had not been prepared. Therefore, she took her bodies to wrap for the child. When the bodies got wet, she had to turn into the wet part and then seeded the dry part for her child. They had not known about the beginning of this ritual. They only knew that it had become an indispensable ritual in Tay people's wedding ceremony for a long time. It reminded people to worship about the nurturing of their parents from the day they were born until getting married. Thus, in the wedding, the groom could forget anything without wet and dry towel because it demonstrates the filial piety of the children to the great merit of their parents. In Tay people's languages, the offering of wet and dry towel was called as Sam Cow. The towel was woven by the cotton fibres. It was 20 centimetres in width and 15 or 20 centimetres in length. A half of the towel was dyed with pink, symbolising for wet towel, and the other was white coloured, symbolising for dry towel. It was considered as yin and yang of heaven and earth. It was not only the rules of heaven and earth, but was also the moral of people to their parents that we have no reason to deny. In joyful and formal atmosphere, the young couple stands in front of the bride's family altar. The groom solemnly offered the wet and dry towel to his mother-in-law. Then, the leader of the groom's relatives started reading the lyrics of Wet and Dry Towel Song. The listeners were full of sobbing and choking emotions. The lyrics had a segment as Respected offering to the parents. Respected offering to grandma and grandpa. There was only a nice day in the year. The day when the groom offered the wet and dry towel. The day when you lying on the wet diaper, the dry one you incubated for me. You was sleeplessness to take care for me. The great merits of nurturing was higher than deep sky. Now I was going to get married, remembering the difficulty of nine months pregnancy. After receiving the wet and dry towel, the mother would have hidden it into the bottom of the coffer. When her daughter had given birth, she would take the towel out of the coffer and then bring it to dye into indigo coloured. Finally, cutting off it to make the sling and diaper for her grandchildren. The whole values had been blended in overall of museum space. It created the unique of a national museum in Viet Bac region, which was a past autonomous region associating with the history for combating the foreign invaders and with the immortal poems such as I wondered would you remember for me when you had come back home but I would remember for you all and the flowers. 
Located in the Valley cultural region, besides the cultural characteristics of the Tay people, Num people also accounted for a huge number of populations. Although having the similarities, Num people have great contributions to make up the diversity culture of ethnic regions. When we discuss about Nung people, we could not forget to concern about their stilted houses. Nowadays, the living standard has been improved. Many of stilted house had replaced for tiled houses. When building a house, Nung people had to comply with the fairly stringent rules, as well as requiring the artistry. The land wall house was prototype reconstruction of the old house of Luk Van Zhao, a Nung Van Si Ling people who located in Kom Tuang Hamlet. Hu Kang Commune, Lok Bing District, Lang Song Province. The land wall house consists of five rooms, three main spaces and two extra spaces. The house was thatched with yin and yang tiles. The walls were made of earthen material, which were 42 centimeters in thickness and 13.5 meters in width, 6.5 meters in length and 4.4 meters in height. The total surface area of the house was more than 90 quarter meters. To complete a land wall house, Nung people in Lak Bin, Lang San province, as well as other provinces, people need to have a particular preparation. They usually prepare the material in one or two years before building a house. It includes woods used as buttress, the trusses and the planks used as a mould in order to compact the soil. They must choose the best kind of soil to create the wall, which was the mixing of soil with soil, clay and gravel. The perfect soil placed in Fazen Hamlet to Duan Commune. Moreover, they must also be prepared the cornerstone, yin and yang tiles, thatched grasses, which had been dried, to build the walls. If the house had five rooms, they will need 10,000 to 25,000 of yin and yang tiles in order to cover for all of the roofs. Normally, people had to collect thatched grasses before building the wall. These thatched grasses must be entirely dried that used for covering the roof in the rainy days. Num people commonly built their house in dry season when the crop has been already harvested. The perfect times for this were from October to February in the following year. Before building houses, Num people always asked the shaman to check about the age of host and then they decided the time for groundbreaking, foundation building and the position of the house and the gate were identified carefully because Num people claim that it is necessary to have a happy and flourishing family. Before building the wall, they also made house excavation as brick houses. They had to dig out all the soft soil down into the hard soil. The soil that used to build a wall was incubated for two or three days. If the soil was too hard, they needed to soak it in water to make it more humid. Similarly, if they were too wet, they must dry it to be harder. Before the good time, families' members had to build the wooden moulds, which was from 1.7 meters to 2 meters in length. They had to prepare wooden pestle. The head of the pestle must be slightly pointed to dig the holes and to compress they together. In the good time, the host began to pour the soil into the wooden mould in the height of 40 centimetres, in case the house was high, or the mould in 35 centimetres in height, if the house was lower. When building it, the corner and each layer was not necessary to use the bamboo for bracing them together. Normally, each family always built their low mould wall by themselves, there was only the short-handed family that needed the great help from their relatives to complete the whole walls. Most of all families did not need the help of relatives until reach to the door. They always need a good technical and experienced people to help them. That because the gable of house was required to build 
lightly and the soil was thinner in order to prevent the collapse and oscillation of the house. It took three months for completing all the walls. When the walls were dried, they began to build their trusses. The spars and the transverse beams were the most important part that created a strong frame structure of the house. Inside the house of Num, an ethnic group is firstly the kitchen. The kitchen is in the house. The altar is placed to the interior side of the house. The house has two rooms. In this house, I can cook rice and mill rice. If my livestock breeding goes well, I can develop the breeding to neighbouring areas where floors for poultry and pigs are placed. We spend our spare time on developing foraging to improve our income. This career has been handed down from generations to generations. That's why I am going to teach my children how to forget so that it will not be lost. To have a good knife, good steel must be chosen first. Then a skillful workman is indispensable. From the first steps, when the knife is formed, the workman must be careful and skillful so that it will be sharp. Perfunctory work will result in chipped knives. Thank you.